Hello, my name is Brian Kujilan, and I'm here studying nursing. This is my last semester. Um, pretty much, uh, you know, interviewing Jane Kaibel was a very, uh, how do you say, uh, rare but unique uh, experience, but it was very good. Uh, you know, I feel that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's almost a miracle that, you know, these people are here today. Uh, so they're walking miracles. And um, I'm going to begin by, uh, you know, giving you a rundown on Jane Kaibel's story as a survivor. Uh, Jane Kaibel came from a wealthy family. Her father owned a department store with a huge variety of items for sale and the cafeteria for shoppers to go on and eat. Her family consisted of her mother, father, and sister. They lived in a big, in a big home with six bedrooms. Before Hitler came into power and while in jail, he wrote a book named Mein Kampf. Hitler documented on his plan to extinguish all Jews in this book. When he came into power in 1933, Jane's father had to close the department store because German troops came in and laid down their sinister order. However, after a few days, Jane's father opened the department store and kept business up and running as usual. He had to support his family. In the meantime, a lot of chaos was going on in Germany. Synagogues and prayer books were destroyed. Jane's father decided to leave the country on November 10th, 1938, and shut down the store for good. The options that Jane's father had to choose from was to evacuate, was either to evacuate heading for Shanghai, China, or Cuba. And Cuba was his choice since it was close to America. In 1939, the father bought four entry visas to get into Cuba at a total of $1,000. The German shipping company informed James' family that the ship would be leaving on May 13, 1939. The name of the ship was called St. Louis, and the captain's name behind it was pronounced as Schroeder. Jane mentioned that the captain of the ship pledged to treat everyone equally and did not agree with Hitler's views. By the time the ship arrived to Cuba, Jane and her family and many others on the ship were denied entry into Cuba. After finding out that the full price of the visas was not paid off somehow. For over a month, Jane's family and other Jews on the ship were stranded at sea with no other place to go. Telegrams from those aboard the ship were sent to President Franklin D. Roosevelt and asked for acceptance into America, but never received a reply. A telegram was also sent to Canada and still no reply. So most people on the boat, including Jane's family, only had a few pairs of clothing in their luggage with no money. The captain of the ship kept a diary and wrote on how he would never return the people back to Germany. With no other place to go for over 30 days, the captain, Schroeder, of the St. Louis ship began to head back to Europe. <coughs> on the way there, the captain tried his best to prevent anyone aboard the ship from trying to commit suicide by jumping off the boat. The captain crossed the English Channel between England, France, Belgium, and Holland. And in France, the country was willing to accept one quarter of the people aboard the ship. And Jane and her family happened to be one of them. By the time the war broke out spreading from Germany to France, Belgium, and Holland, Jane's father managed to get her sister and her out of France on a French ship to America in December 24, 1939. They avoided Hitler's rule and finally landed in America on January 5th, 1940. Jane would never forget all the tension and heartaches that she went through during the voyages on the ship. At night, all lights would be completely off as they sailed with the intention to be undetected by any other attackers. 
Could you imagine the pain that she must have felt while she was on the boat? Not only Jane, but everyone else on that ship. She, was, uh, she also will not forget how her grandmother, who was blind, was not allowed to leave the country and was placed in a concentration camp. It haunts her until this day how her grandmother may have been exterminated in the concentration camp. The feelings that this kind of situation has put her through is unforgettable. And she also has told me to never forget. You know, this experience for me reminded me of a time years ago when I was interviewed. I mean, when I actually spoke to uh, a elder woman, she was like a grandmother to me. And she had told me how, you know, the streets were once all dirt. There was chickens running around. There was, you know, there was no gravel on the, on the street where she lived on. And I remember listening to that story how, you know, I felt an emotion of her telling me that. Now, the way this reminds me, you know, of Jane's story is that, you know, you know, there's just some things that can't be forgotten. And in a situation like this, not only can Jane, you know, not only will Jane ever forget this, but so many other people in the world who experienced the Holocaust situation will also never forget what happened. And you know it's um, it's something that should always be talked about, and I agree that uh, you know hatred is something that uh, you know should never exist, and you know, but there will always be good and evil forces, but uh, you know, God willing, the good will always prevail, and um, you know it's also very good that Jane was able to avoid uh, getting placed into a concentration camp by actually. Uh, you know, boarding a ship and uh, landed in France. And once the war broke out, she, you know, she ended up, you know, boarding the ship and arriving at America. So, you know, it's just, it's just a blessing, but it was still a struggle for Jane. You know, that, that year on the ship, the two years for her was, you know, could you imagine all the terror and everything that haunted her? So it was very, uh, it was very capturing. There are a few Holocaust survivors who are still alive today, and it has been uh, it has been uh, 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 it has been a pleasure to get to feel the uh, you know interviewing such a person with unique humor as Jane. Jane reminded me uh, also of um, you know a person that sends out a message without even without even you know without even trying that you know, people have to be strong and, and intelligent. Um, you know, Jane is, is very smart and you're able to just feel it uh, right, you know, when you're speaking with her. You know, it's, it's just, um, it's something that, you know, that you, not anybody at, at, at this age, and, and even any age, you know, not, not all people have this, this wisdom, you know, and it's, it's important to, uh, once again, to never forget what happened and, you know, uh, everything is a blessing.